Welcome back, everybody. Moving on to the next question, we have a polynomial inequality here to deal with. So with polynomial inequalities, what's the first step? We got to bring everything over to one side. So I'm going to take everything on the right side, bring it over to the left. So I got x cubed plus 18x squared minus 7x plus 5. This negative 8x comes over, 8x cubed rather, becomes positive 8x cubed plus 3x minus 13 greater than or equal to 0. Brought everything over, signs just switched. So now let's collect some like terms. 1x cubed plus 8x cubed, that gives us 9x cubed. Uh, the 18x squared, it's by itself, so we'll just write that as is. Negative 7x plus 3x, that gives us negative 4x. And then uh, 5 minus 13, that gives us negative 8. And we're finding when is it greater than or equal to 0. So now that we have a polynomial that's simplified on the left side, we have to factor it. First thing we got to check, can we take anything out? Well, notice there is no common factor between the constants, and then there's no variable that we can take out. There's no variable attached to this negative 8. So we have to do factor theorem. Actually, you know what? I just realized now you can do this by grouping, right? So notice from these two, I can take out a 9x squared. And if I do that, I'll be left with x plus 2. And then from here, I could take out a negative 4. And I'd be left with x plus 2. Right? And then... Um, Factoring these, I could take out an x plus 2, right, this common bracket, and then I'll be left with 9x squared minus 4, still greater than or equal to 0. And then this 9x squared minus 4, that is a difference of squares, 3x plus 2, 3x minus 2. And it's fully factored. So actually much quicker than I personally thought. Um, so whenever you have a cubic function, like I mentioned before, you always want to check if you could do it by grouping. You can do factor theorems. So you could have plugged in 1, negative 1, et cetera, et cetera. And then negative 2 would have made this 0. Then divide this by x plus 2. And then you would end up getting this as the quotient. Then you can just factor it with a uh, difference of squares. But I, in my opinion, it's just much quicker to do it by grouping. But you can do whatever you like, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, but now we have this factored polynomial here. And we have to find when is it greater than or equal to 0. Now once you get to this point, there's a couple of ways to solve this. You can do it by graphing or with a sign chart. We've gone over both ways in the lecture videos. Uh, and I'm going to show you both ways in this video. In my opinion, you should do both ways whenever you get questions like this, just so you could see how the sign chart and the graph relate. And it'll just increase your understanding a bit more, especially of the sign chart, because it's new in this chapter. Right? So if we are to graph this, how would it look like? Well, let's start off with the end behaviors. This is an odd degree, and it has a positive leading coefficient. So we know the end behaviors are going to be from here, from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. And then what are the intercepts here? So we got negative 2, we got negative 2 over 3, and then we got positive 2 over 3. So negative 2 over 3 is like negative 0.66, so that is to the right of negative 2. So negative 2 would be here. Then we got negative 2 over 3. And then we got positive 2 over 3, which would be over here. And then what's the y-intercept? You can plug in 0 for all the x's here, multiply the brackets, or you can just simply get it from the expanded polynomial, which is easier to do. If we plug in 0 for all the x's, negative 8. So it has to go through this negative 8 as well. So how's this going to look? It's going to look something like that, right? So when is this polynomial greater than or equal to zero? When is it above the x-axis? Well, over here in this interval, and over here as well, right? So the solutions to this 
would be x when x is in between or equal to negative 2 and negative 2 over 3, right? So that's one solution. We have to include that negative 2 and negative 2 over 3 because they're asking what is it greater than or equal to 0. So we got to include those y values of 0 as well. Then the other solution is when x is greater than or equal to 2 over 3. Right, so all the x values greater than or equal to 2 over 3, the function is either going to be at 0 or above it. And that's what we are looking for. And then the rest of the intervals, the function is negative. So those are your two answers right there. Now what about the sine chart? So with the sine chart, if you remember, what you do is you write negative infinity, and then you write all of the x-intercepts in order from lowest to highest. So negative 2. Then we got negative 2 over 3. Then we got positive 2 over 3. And then we got positive infinity. And what you want to do is you want to make columns for each of these. And then you want to make rows. And the rows are just going to be all of these factors. So the first one, x plus 2. And then we'll have 3x plus 2. And then we'll have 3x minus 2. Right? And then uh, here, the last uh, row would be just the polynomial. So all of the factors multiplied together. And now what we do is we just pick a number between negative 2 and negative infinity. So like negative 3, for example, and plug it in for all the brackets. So negative 3 plus 2, that gives us a negative number. This would be a negative number. This would be a negative number. A number between negative 2 and negative 2 over 3, an easy one to pick is like negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1, so that would be positive. This would be negative, and then this would be negative as well. And then between negative 2 over 3, positive 2 over 3, an easy one to pick is 0. So if we plug in 0 for all these, we would get positive, positive, negative. Then between 2 over 3 and infinity, so like 2. If we plug in 2 for all these, all of the factors will be positive. So now what we do is we multiply all these out. Negative times negative times negative gives us a negative number. Positive times negative times negative gives us a positive number. This would be negative. This would be positive. So when is this polynomial greater than or equal to 0? When is it positive? Well, in this interval over here, and in this interval over here. And notice how these intervals are the same ones that we got from the graph, right? Between negative 2 and negative 2 over 3, and between 2 over 3 and infinity, which is the same as x being greater than or equal to 2 over 3. So if we write these um, solutions in set notation instead of an in interval notation like we did up there, this would be in square brackets, negative 2, negative 2 over 3, because it has to be inclusive of those endpoints, because it's greater than or equal to 0. And then this one would be x is an element from positive 2 over 3 to positive infinity. And that would be a circle bracket with the infinity. Right? So this is another way to write the solutions in set notations instead of uh, interval notation. But uh, either way, your teacher want, might uh, want both. And then be careful with these um, square brackets here. If it was just greater than 0, then these would be circle brackets because you wouldn't include the intervals. But because it's greater than or equal to 0, they have to be square brackets.